you love me, you will keep my commandment, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, for you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. Praise the Lord. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ introduces to his disciples uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit because he had already prepared them that he was leaving. And their worry was that he was their present help. Whenever they were in need, whenever they wanted anything, they would run to him. Now that he has declared his departure, so they were left in a state of uh, confusion. They didn't know what to do. Then Jesus, understanding their hearts and their minds, tells them, I will ask my father to send you another helper who will not come and go the way I have done, but he will be with you always. And yesterday we saw that when the Bible says another helper, it simply means one that has been called to stand alongside you. And number two, one that has been called to intercede for you. And number three, one that has been called to strengthen you. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to show you why Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit. He was not just introducing another concept or another good idea. Hello? He was introducing a help that he himself was a beneficiary of. So he was not just introducing what he had somewhere. He was introducing what has literally worked for him. Praise the Lord. Amen? And the Bible has so many examples of how the Holy Spirit worked in the life of Jesus. And right from conception, in the book of Luke chapter number 1, and verse number 34, and verse number 35, Luke chapter number 1, when Mary receives the prophetic word that she's going to conceive and have a child, and Mary knowing that she's a virgin, she asked her question, how can this thing be since I do not know a man? Look at the answer, verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Praise God. So Jesus Christ is introducing uh, the power that caused him to be conceived. Remember, he is God, but for him now to fit in the womb of a human being, it took the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So he's not just introducing a limited helper. He is introducing a helper that is able to do anything. And actually, after this statement, the Bible says, for with God, nothing is impossible. So this helper, the Holy Spirit, is the one who has power to deal with any impossibility. And this afternoon I pray that may you allow him to deal with any impossibility in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you facing a situation like Mary and you are wondering how shall this thing be? Maybe you have a vision, you have a burden in your heart and you don't know what kind of connections will bring a solution in your life. The Bible is saying with God nothing is impossible because when the Holy Spirit takes over that burden, Everything becomes a possibility. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ on his mission here on the earth. In the book of Luke chapter number 4. And verse number 1. He was always led by the same Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit led Christ on his mission here on the earth. On his assignment here on the earth. He always did what the Holy Spirit led him to do. Bible says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit led Christ. And if Christ was led by the Holy Spirit, me and you, we must also become subjective to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I have come to remind you this afternoon, the Holy Spirit is the greatest leader you will ever trust. And he is still willing to lead you. He knows everything. He knows where the terrains are. He knows how to subdue anything. And this afternoon, I have come to remind you, he is still your ever-present help in matters guidance, in matters leadership. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we appear, I know our generation, we talk about being leaderless. But now he says he was led. So Christ has a leader, the Holy Spirit. So we can't afford to walk around these streets of spiritual, uh, the spiritual walk without him leading us. So one of his major assignments is to lead the chosen ones of God. And this afternoon, I have come to remind you. Remember this week, we are just being reminded that the Holy Spirit is still willing to lead you. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit is willing to lead you. Hallelujah. So he led Christ. He can also lead us. Amen. In his ministry here on the earth, Jesus Christ ministered through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why in the book of Luke 4, verse number 18, when he was launching his manifesto, using that word on a lighter note, when he was launching his mission or his assignment, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to go and do the assignment of the kingdom. So the Holy Spirit is your empowerer. He is the one who guides you in your ministry and in your mission. And it is my prayer that you will also submit your assignment. You will submit your mission to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ didn't begin his mission and his ministry without the assurance of the Holy Ghost. The same thing to us this afternoon. Do you have an assignment? Do you have a mission? Allow the Holy Ghost to brood over it. Then now you can begin with with him in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we see that the Holy Spirit helped Jesus in his ministry here on the earth. But can I surprise you? Even in his death, the Bible says in the book of Romans 8 and verse number 11, that the Spirit of God who raised him from the dead, he did not just resurrect on his own, the Holy Spirit was involved. So we are dealing with a person that is so powerful that even death bows to him. Hello? You can trust the Holy Ghost to lead you. You can trust him in that situation. Do you have anything in your life that is dead? The Holy Ghost is willing to come through for you and revive that thing and resurrect it back to life. Hallelujah. Maybe you have prayed for too long. The way I gave you my testimony, that I did so many things, I struggled within me. Until one night, the Holy Ghost asked me, have you talked to me about this thing? When I talked to him, believe you me, the following day, it was on a Thursday, I met a brother who had an answer to what had been troubling me for six months. <laughs> so I was the one who was causing delay to the answer. Because I had not talked to the Holy Spirit about my burden. I was walking around with it. Mad at the kanjo. Mad with everybody around me. But I had never talked to the Holy Spirit. But the moment I talked to him that night. The following day on Thursday. I remember it was around 2.30. A brother comes and tells me. Man of God. One, two, three, four, five. And that thing was lifted. I have come to remind you. Do you have a situation that is so dead? Talk to him about it. One of the verses I love in the Bible is the book of James chapter number 5 and verse number 13. The Bible says, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. In other words, it simply means talk to God first. Before you talk to anybody else, talk to God first. Glory to Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is not just a force. But he is a power that raised Christ from the dead. So if you can engage him, if you can allow him, he can raise so many things in your life back to life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And not only did he raise him from the dead, he also participated in his ascension. As he was going, the Holy Ghost also raised him. One as if you son. And if all these things the Holy Ghost did in the life of Jesus, what about us? I was showing you what he did in the life of Christ. Now I'm coming to us now as believers. Why he introduced this great help? Because this great helper 
has a great assignment in your life. And if you dare trust him, believe you me, things are going to shift. You will discover the things you've been calling either generational curse or a delay. It is not actually delay. It is because you have not allowed him to help you. Tell neighbor you need this help. So you realize right from the moment we got born again, the Holy Spirit is the one who worked on our regeneration as believers. That day you got born again, as the preacher was preaching in that crusade, maybe in school, maybe on the marketplace, it is the Holy Ghost who began working a work in you. Then you decided just to come and, and repeat after the preacher. It was not your initi initiative. It was his initiative. The Holy Ghost himself. So he is responsible for your new birth. Therefore, you must embrace this new birth with an understanding that I am not the owner of this new birth, but the Holy Spirit is. And therefore, I can trust that I'm born again. What does he first son? Hallelujah. And not only does he initiate your new birth, but he chooses now to indwell you. So you are not empty. You are loaded. Hallelujah. That's why in the book of 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 19, he says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He chooses to make his abode in you. He chooses to inhabit in you. So anytime you are walking, you are not alone. The Holy Spirit indwells you, and therefore you are loaded with any divine capacity that is needed for anything in life. I have come to talk to people who are so loaded. Please tell your neighbor, I am loaded. Because I have the helper within me. Glory to God. So even when you go through the shadow of the valley of death, fear not. Remember you are loaded. You have him within you. Hallelujah. Hello. Another thing that I really love about the Holy Spirit, not only does he indwell me, but one of the things that I have come to love, that he fills me. Oh, hallelujah. He fills me. Anytime I am full of him. In other words, I am equipped for life and I am equipped for any eventuality. You know, many times as believers, we walk around as rained on chicken. The enemy wants us to feel as though we are on our own. I want you to remember that the Holy Spirit is right with you. You are not alone and you are not on your own. This week I've come to remind you, you are so privileged more than any other creation because divinity chose to fill you and to empower you for life and for any assignments. Another thing I like about the Holy Spirit is this. He is the one who interprets to us spiritual things. Are you going through a situation? Are you going through a season and you don't know what to do? The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 12 to 14. 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 12 to verse number 14. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. These things we also speak, not in words which man's, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches Comparing spiritual things with the spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God. But for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually designed. So you have the Holy Spirit to interpret to you spiritual things. Even seasons. Relationships. Doors that come in your life. It is the work of the Holy Spirit who is resident in your life to explain them to you. And you must be a man of the Spirit for you to understand his language. Glory to Jesus. You are not empty. You are so loaded. From today, any time you encounter a season, you encounter a situation that you don't know how to go about it. The Bible is very clear that we have the Holy Spirit who helps us to understand spiritual things because they are spiritually designed. Never approach spiritual things 
with carnality. Never approach spiritual things with the good minds that you have. Sometimes our good minds are limited. Hallelujah. I have come to remind you that the Holy Spirit still wants to interpret to you spiritual things in your life. Never be stranded. Never be stranded. You have what it takes to walk in this reality and in this solution in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Another thing about the Holy Spirit is this. He guides the believer. He leads the believer. Romans 8 verse number 14. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So his other assignment is to guide sons of God. And remember where we read the Bible says he is the spirit of truth. So he can't lead you into a lie. He can't lead you into a mistake. Hello? Praise God. It is our work to trust him. As sons and daughters of God, it is our duty to trust him. Praise God. Another thing that I like about the Holy Spirit is this. He empowers the believer for divine assignments. So you're not just going out as another busybody. No. You have what it takes to handle spiritual assignments. Right in the beginning, in the book of Acts, he says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Chapter 1, verse number 8. And you shall be my witnesses. So he has empowered you for any assignment. Glory to Jesus. So as you go out, Go with this understanding that you are empowered for any divine assignment. Praise the Lord. The other work that he does in the life of believer is he sanctifies or he sets apart the believer. First Peter 1 verse number 23 and then the book of Acts 13 verse number 2. Let's read first of all 1 Peter 1 verse 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Hello? So you have been born again through the incorruptible word of God which abides forever. Acts 13 verse number 2 is one of the verses that I think this, this year I've really preached out of it. Separate to me. Barnabas and Paul for the work to which. So the Holy Spirit is the one in charge of the work. So he sets you apart for anything that God wants you to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The other assignment of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer is to enable you bear fruit. To bear fruit. Remember we have been called to bear fruit. In Galatians 5.22, the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. So any fruit the believer bears is, must be a product of the Holy Spirit. So he has such an enormous assignment in our lives as believers. And I pray that all of us will come to a place of allowing ourselves to bear fruit that is out of of the work of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Last but not least, the Holy Spirit seals us. Oh, hallelujah. And I think I will dwell here for some time. Then we close. He seals us. He has sealed us. And you know, when something is sealed, it means it is locked up. It is preserved. Hello? So the Holy Spirit, after you got born again, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1, verse number 13 and verse number 14, that he has sealed us. And this should answer the question that you've had even concerning your spiritual walk. In him also, in him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance 
until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? So I want to remind you that your inheritance in God is sealed and guaranteed. So we don't have to look for nyota. It is there. This thing is sealed. Nobody can steal it. <laughs> Hello? The Holy Spirit knew very well that if he hands this to men, men are manipulative. So he sealed it in Christ. So the question we must ask, how did we come to the place of sealing? Ephesians chapter number one. Let's begin from verse number one as I try to bring this to close. Let me show you how you are sealed. I love Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 1 to verse number 14, because it reveals to us our identity in Christ. Amen? Who we are in Christ. And the Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints. Hello? To who? To the saints. Who are saints? The sanctified. Who are the sanctified? They set apart. So he is writing to those that have already been sanctified. He is writing to those that have already been saved and set apart by Christ. Hello? So this letter is to those who are born again. Hallelujah. Verse number two, just follow me. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to make a sentence out of this chapter. Then we close. So we find that he writes the letter to the saints. So tell your neighbor, I am a saint. So I want us to begin by believing you are a saint. For us who are in Christ, we don't die. Then we wait for maybe two years. We perform a miracle. Then uh, we go through sainthood. Then become, no. We became saints through the death of Christ. So say with authority, I am a saint. No, you don't believe it. Say, I'm a saint. Hallelujah. So from today, you can call yourself Saint Nolo. <laughs> Amen. But verse number six, grace to you and peace from God our Father to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, and the Lord Jesus Christ. When he is your father, who are you to him? Say, I'm a son. So let's now form our sentence. Say, I am a saint who is a son. Hallelujah. Verse number three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now he's writing to a blessed person. We are not waiting for the blessing. We are already blessed. And you better believe it. Say, I am blessed. I want to show us how, why we are sealed. So say, I am a saint. Who is a son that is blessed? You better believe it. Say, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a saint who is a son that is blessed. So from today, don't wait for a prophet from anywhere to come and tell you you are blessed. You better walk around knowing I am blessed. Glory to Jesus. Verse number four. So it's a sentence we are forming that will lead us to being sealed. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Tell your neighbor, I am chosen. Uh -uh, say I'm chosen. So you didn't choose Christ, he chose you. Amen. So in this sentence, he say I am a saint who is a son that is blessed after being chosen. Oh, hallelujah. So in other words, you passed the exam. You passed the merit of, king, of the kingdom. Glory to Jesus. So say I am chosen. So from today, please walk around knowing you are chosen. You are the best that God has. Glory to Jesus. Verse number five. Having predestined us to adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I am adopted. <laughs> you better believe it. I am adopted. Amen. So say I am a saint who is a son that is blessed after being chosen, then adopted. Now, you know, when it comes to adoption, people can reject you. 
if today Pastor Mark was to adopt me, I may find favor in his eyes, but, uh, but he has to convince his wife and the other sons if they are ready for another son. Hello? <laughs> but I thank God that our adoption, there was no rejection. There was no objection. One as if you son. So the next verse now shows us that. Let's go to the next verse. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which we were accepted where? In the beloved. Say I am accepted. No, back to our sentence. Say I am a saint who is a son that is blessed after being chosen. Hello? And then adopted and then accepted. So your adoption was accepted. Glory to God. So you belong where? In the beloved. You are not a neighbor in the family of God. You are not a cousin. You are a son who belongs. So you better function and operate as a son who belongs. Because you are a saint who is a son that is blessed after being chosen and adopted. Then accepted in the beloved. Therefore you belong. One as first son. The next verse, verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So your adoption took redemption. One as first son. So say I am a sign, I'm, I'm a saint who is a son that is blessed after being chosen and adopted. Accepted in the beloved. Now I'm redeemed. You better believe it. So in this family, you're not a sinner. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because redemption means to buy back out of. <laughs> so you are not sitting there waiting. Maybe somebody may come and lay an allegation on you. You better sit there knowing that you belong. The next verse now says, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. So God expects after redeeming you, now you must be wise. So say, I am wiser. So now you no longer walk in the previous ways. You no longer do the things you used to do because the wisdom of God now is your radar. God guides you. So say, I'm a, saint, I'm a saint who is a son that is blessed after being chosen. Hello? And then the next one is adopted where? And accepted. I was adopted, then accepted where? In the beloved. After being redeemed. Now I am wise. Say I am wise. So in other words, I'm God's wisdom on two feet. Hallelujah. The next verse. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Verse 10. That in, he, in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Verse 11. In him also we have obtained what? An inheritance. So now that you are wise, you qualify for inheritance. It is guaranteed. And now because you have an inheritance now, what happens? He has now sealed you. Oh, that's where I was headed. One as your son. So in him we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Verse 12. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Verse 13 now, our climax. In him you also trusted after you heard of the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So because you have an inheritance, you are the redeemed of God, your life is sealed. Your destiny is sealed. It is settled in him. So anytime you are doubting, allow the Holy Ghost to remind you that you are a saint who is a son that is blessed after being chosen 
and adopted, then accepted in the beloved. Now he is wise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you, are, you have been sealed because you are a saint, you are a son, you are chosen, you are wise, you are redeemed, you have an inheritance. Then he put a seal. What is a seal? To preserve, to lock up. May the Holy Spirit keep reminding you these things. That any day you feel low, remember you are a saint. Any day you feel low, remember you are a son. Any day you go through luck, remember you are blessed. Any day you feel you are not worthy, remember you are wise. Any time you feel you don't belong, remember that you are accepted in the beloved. And you belong in the family of God. God bless you so much.